hi guys, it's Miss Harry Des here at the Study Hive and today's lesson we're going to be looking at the immune system and how it's constantly in a war zone all the time. So let's get started. So the main learning objectives of today's lesson is looking at what non-specific defense mechanisms our body has, what is the immune system, what phagocytosis is, and antibody and antitoxin production. And some of the key words that you want to really pay attention to are words such as phagocytosis, pathogen, antibody, and antigen, which I'll explain exactly what they mean as we go through the lesson together. So let's go back into history when castles used to erect themselves from the ground and they were designed in such a way to protect the kings and queens. Now they had moats around the castle which was a lot of water and the reason they did this is to make it really difficult for invaders to get into the castle. So this moat was like the first line of defence and if an invader somehow managed to get through this moat and get into the castle, uh, find some form of an entry, uh, they would be searched for by guards, which was almost like a second line of defense. And when the guards would find these invaders, they would put them into prison or kill them. Really morbid stuff, but that's how they used to protect their kings and queens. So why am I talking about this and what has it got to do with the immune system? And I'm gonna tell you now. So the body has non-specific defense mechanisms, which means that our body, without us realizing, we're always under attack by microorganisms. Now, microorganisms, like the word suggests, mean small living things. And these can be anything from bacteria, fungi, or even viruses. So our body's first line of defense is the skin. And just like the moat around the classroom, it acts as a protection to stop pathogens being able to enter our body. Now, you might be asking, what is a pathogen? Now a pathogen is any microorganism that can cause harm. And the reason we define that is because there are actually some microorganisms like bacteria that are actually really good for you. So the pathogens are those bad ones. Now if a pathogen tries to get into your body but it's stopped because the skin, not only does it produce oil, it also produces antimicrobial substances which stop the pathogens from trying to enter. And these pathogens will then try and find other entry points. These entry points could be your ears, your nose, your eyes for example, and so many other entry points for these pathogens to get into your body. Let's take, for example, the ears. Now, your ears produce earwax. Now, socially, we have a shower, we take a cotton bud, and we really take out that earwax so that we can be acceptable in society. But really and truly, your body wants to keep that earwax there because it stops pathogens from being able to come into your body. Another example might be your eyes. Now the tears in your eyes are full of enzymes. So if a pathogen tries to get in through the entry point of your eyes, these enzymes are gonna break them down until they are not active. Now some of these pathogens are really smart and they somehow bypass these traps. Let's take for example a pathogen going into your mouth and down into your body. Now the first thing it's gonna encounter are two different pipes. One is your windpipe, we call that the trachea, and the other one is your esophagus, which is otherwise known as a food pipe. Now, when a pathogen goes in your mouth, it will travel down your windpipe, which is called your trachea. Your trachea looks something like this, and it splits into two branches which enter your lungs. Now, if I zoom into the lining of the trachea, you have lots of cells that look like this. And on these cells, they've got these hair-like projection, which are called cilia. Now, it sounds like you have a hairy windpipe, but that's not true. Cilia are really, really, really tiny projections that come from the cells, and their main aim is to brush up any bacteria or any pathogens or dust out up your trachea and then go into your other pipe which is your food pipe known as the esophagus and that's where it's going to get digested until it's going to have no effect or harm to you. In between the cilia cells in your trachea you've also got goblet cells. That's right that here, goblet cells. Now, goblet cells, if I colour that in yellow, uh, they release mucus, and that mucus traps the bacteria or it traps the, uh, the pathogen, and that allows the cilia, which is the hair on the other cells, the ciliated epithelial cells, to brush it up. 
So the big question is what is the immune system and how does it work? Now a lot of people when they think blood they just think red blood cells but actually blood is made up of lots of different components. Now the red blood cells carry oxygen all around your body. It also carries platelets and that's important for blood clotting. It's the reason why you get scabs when you cut yourself. And finally, if I take you all the way down here, uh, it contains white blood cells and these are the cells that will protect you from pathogens. So the immune system really is the way that your body protects you. And isn't it so awesome that when you cut yourself, you don't tell your body to heal. Something's happening in your body through cell signaling where the platelets go to the site of the cut and they build a scab. Now why do they need to build a scab? They actually build the scab because they want to form a barrier to stop pathogens from being able to enter this open wound. And in that time, underneath, all the cells will be dividing by mitosis until it's healed and covered and then the scab will fall off. So let's look at how all of these types of white blood cells can attack these pathogens that enter your body. So the first type of cell we're going to be looking at is something called a phagocyte. So imagine the army. Now there's different people in the army that have different roles, but they're still part of the army. In the same way, white blood cells have different types of white blood cells that have different roles. And the first one I'm going to be talking to you about is a type of white blood cell called the phagocyte. So if I highlight that for you over here, the phagocyte's really popular in being able to engulf the pathogen. So what does that mean? It consumes the pathogen so that the pathogen is within the, the cell, the white blood cell, and then it digests it up with the enzymes that is contained within the phagocyte. Now in an exam, you cannot use the word it eats or consumes because that's really bad practice. So the key word that I'm highlighting for you to use in your exam is the word engulf. So you can see here in step one, uh, the phagocyte, which is a type of white blood cell, recognizes a pathogen. It starts to change its shape to engulf the pathogen until the pathogen is inside the white blood cell and then the enzymes found in the cell will break this down until it has no negative impact on the body. So this is also an example of non-specific response. In the same way as the first line of defense which was the skin, the ears, they were all non-specific responses because they don't choose what pathogens they get rid of. They just get rid of anything that they think is foreign. And in the same way, this uh, process, which is phagocytosis, is where these types of white blood cells don't select which pathogen they kill. They just engulf as many as they know is foreign. So the second way that these white blood cells can protect you is through something called antibody production. So if you look at this type of white blood cell, it's actually called a B lymphocyte. And what is so special about the B lymphocyte is that it produces these antibodies, which are proteins. And the antibodies will try and look for the pathogen in the body. And how does it do this? Well, the pathogen specifically has these interesting shaped proteins surrounding the cell and these are called antigens. So the antigens is almost the identity of the pathogen and they have very specific shapes. So you can see here that the antibody from the B lymphocyte has to find the correct shape of the antigen from the pathogen. Now I've drawn here different examples of how these antigens can look. So they can have different shapes which means that the right B lymphocyte needs to produce the correct shaped antibody to bind to the correct antigen in order to remove it. So you might be asking the question, why don't our white blood cells kill our own cells? That's a fantastic question. The white blood cells actually recognize our own cells because they also have antigens, you can see here. And these antigens are proteins found on the outside of the cell. But because they recognize them as our cells because of their antigens, they won't harm it. And therefore, there is no response which is great. 
Some people have autoimmune diseases and that means our white blood cells are attacking our own cells because it can't differentiate between what is self, what is our cells, versus what are foreign cells that are invading the body. So an example of this could be type 1 diabetes and type 1 diabetes is where the beta cells found in our pancreas which produce insulin get attacked by our own immune system. So if we zoom in to see what that looks like, you can see here that the antibody, I'll take my laser, you can see the antibody has attached itself to the pathogen over here, binded itself, and when it does this, when the shapes are correct, it will either cause the pathogens to stick together or it will tag the pathogens and it will call the other white blood cells, like the phagocytes, to come over and destroy the pathogen by engulfing them. So they work together in a team in order to protect us. So what happens next? Now you might remember watching the vaccination lesson at the study hive on YouTube and you would have noticed that what happens is when it's encountered a pathogen and the pathogen has now left, it starts to divide lots of white blood cells by a process called mitosis. Now mitosis is just cell division and it does this because this white blood cell now has the correctly shaped antibody for that specific pathogen and if it was ever to encounter that pathogen again the next response is going to be so much quicker because it's already prepared to be able to fight it. So this takes us to the final part of our lesson, antitoxin production. Sounds really complicated, but it's actually really easy. So when these pathogens enter our body, let's say for example the bacteria, they will produce these awful toxins. So what the white blood cells do to counteract this is that they will produce antitoxins to get rid of the toxins. Because what the toxins do is it creates an imbalance and it affects the processes that could happen in our cells or in our body. So the white blood cells produce antitoxins to make sure that the bacteria are no longer harmful to us. So that's everything you need to know for your exam about the immune system and I hope it gives you a new sense of appreciation as to how amazing you are and how awesome your immune system is in constantly protecting you from these pathogens that are trying to attack you every single day and you don't even have to lift a finger. So. If you really enjoyed this, then you might want to watch the vaccination video, which really nicely ties into how vaccinations work and is also part of your GCSE and I GCSE spec. And I hope you have a lovely day and I will see you soon. Bye!